Rainbows of Royalty by Trinary. Chapter 25. The battle begins. Rainbow Dash is a corner were pinned down behind a fallen chunk of ceiling as magical blasts and lightning rain down upon them. On the other side of the sinking throne room, the Shadow Bolts fought to stay upright as their erased mistress shook the room with her spells. Master! The lead Shadow Bolt called out a warning. The palace is falling apart! She quailed under the furious gaze of Nightmare Moon, but apparently her warning was needed to stop her attack. Find them! She snapped at the Shadow Bolts. Do not let them escape! This was easier said than none, for all the dust and debris still hung in the air, effectively shielding the Pegasus and Zebra from sight, as they planned their next move. Rainbow crouched low as one of the Pegasi of the darkness flew overhead, looking this way and that for them. Do you still have that weird illusion pattern of yours? She whispered softly. Sakura nodded, not understanding what the hot-tempered Pegasus was up to. Death smiled. Good! Here's what I want you to do. The Shadow Bolt Cat flew around the large room, brushing aside the dust and smoke in the air as he beat her wings, looking for her captives. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she caught a flicker of moment from behind one of the pillars, holding up what was left of the roof. She quickly floated behind it, her voice ready to let out a snort of triumph to her fellows. Instead, she was greeted by a ghostly green apparition, a small unicorn filly so small she didn't even have her cutie mark yet. Her eyes wavering as she looked up. She let out a soft, Mama! Something in the Shadow Bolt's heart constricted as she recognized her, or what she was a representative of, at any rate. It was Dinky Doo, daughter of Ditsy Doo. The Shadow Bolt squelched the feelings from the body she was wearing as her outlet. She turned to walk away, but her hose refused to buzz. What sorcery is this? She spat. Mama! The ghostly Dinky begged, her face crunching up in a sniffle. As he thought the earth to cry. I want my mama. The shadow bolt covered her head with her hose. Stop it! Show yourself! Rainbow Death stepped up from behind a pillar, the mist gently curling around her. I'm right here, Ditsy. The captain's twisted gargoyle wings flat angrily, her gold goggles flashing. I am not Ditsy Do! Death stepped her muscle right to her face. Yes, you are! You are Ditsy Do! You live in Ponyville. You're a weather worker and a male mare. You love muffins and one of the sweetest ponies around. You're clumsy, on kilter, and a silly pony sometimes. But you always try your best, and every pony loves you for it. You're always teary and a great friend. She went out the way around her. Whenever I needed some pony to give me a hoof, you were always there for me. Just like you've been there for your daughter. She pointed at Dinky. Daughter? The shadow bolt stuttered. Yeah. The sweetest little filly you've ever met. And she's your daughter. She loves you to death, and right now, she misses you. You're her hero. She needs you. Come back to her. Das urged. The shout about covered her head with her hose. You belong to me! Nightmare Moon's voice echoed from within Dizzy's own head. Come on, Dizzy. I know you're in there! Rainbow Das hugged her. Fight it! I... I belong to you. The shadow bolt closed her eyes. It was Dizzy Doo who loved him. I belong to no pony! With an agonized scream, Sidney so snapped. The other two shadow bolts, formerly the Royal Pegasi Guard's steel wing and silver lining, also held their heads as screened as Nightmare Moon's hold was broken. Three of them were bound together by her dark magic. Perhaps Nightmare Moon had expended two months of her magic and rage fuel attack. Maybe there was something in Sakura's power or her wards that weakened Nightmare Moon's hold on Dizzy Dew and the others. Or maybe, just maybe, the love of a mother overpowered all else. Dinky! The sea desperately Edka reached out with both hosts to embrace her daughter, only to have passed through. The illusionary Dinky faking out assistance. No! Dizzy stared at her own host, discolored by Nightmare Moon's magic to a dull, acid gray peeking through the holes in her own dark shadow ball uniform. M nothing it's okay, Ditsy. It's okay. Dinky's safe. Rainbow reassured her. Holding her tight as they both sank to her knees. It's gonna be okay. Sakura sat down in the shadows, kneeling down next to Ditsy to check her pulse. She nodded. Ditsy would be fine. Lot is where you are wrong. The three mares looked up to see Nightmare Moon towering over them. Her eyes flashed with cold fury. You have doomed your own funds with this act. I withdraw my countenance from them.
With a discharge from her horn, Ditsy and the others writhed in pain. Their shadow belt uniforms gone and returned to their numerous forms. The shock rendered them all unconscious, like in had shining armor. Rainbow Dads held the unconscious Ditsy to, to her as the green illusion mist dissipated around them. Ditsy, she said softly, as she looked up at Nightmare Moon with pure hate in her eyes. I segregate new soldiers. I'm tainted and pure! The Dark Alicorn announced as her eyes crackled with energy. Soon, new shadow bolts appeared, congealing out the smoke and mist in Nightmare Moon's own mane. First one, then two, three. Soon, there were dozens of them. Did you really think that depriving me of a few lonely servants could stop me? You haven't been even inconvenienced me. I shall cross you as easily as I have crossed all who have dared to oppose me throughout the world. I am power unlike any of you have known. Absolute, infinite, and unrelenting. You have no choice but to prepare for a long, dark future, as my subjects are my slaves. Raymond Dance rolled her eyes, face switching. You know what you need to do? You really need to take the opportunity to shut the hay up! As far as final words go, I've heard better. Nightmare Moon turned to her Shadow Ball army. Finish them! Not so fast, Nightmare Moon! A call came from behind him. At the doorway of the throne room soon, Applejack, Pinkie Pie, and Rarity. Applejack stepped forward. So all over for you! The Mare of Darkness laughed. Ha 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 ha! I'm not supposed to be intimidated. You'll have to do better than not! Alright, fine! AJ stepped aside, revealing Twilight Sparkle, magically levitating, six grain stone rocks, each card with a unique symbol. How you like flame apples? Nightmare Moon drew back. The elements of harmony? But how? You'd be surprised what you find laying around your own house. Rainbow quit cheekily. Get them! Right to the evil princess. The shadow balls lifted to the air, caressing at both groups. The air was thick with dark wings flipping. Get down! Applejack called as every pony hit the floor. A dozen time, from behind a group, the door came a shower of rocks and dirt to hit the shadow bolt charge right on. From her place on the floor, Verity peeked behind her. Good job, boys. You're such good dogs. Roughly thirty diamond dogs were bent over, then back to the door, frankly digging at the ground, tossing broken bits of floor and dirt between their legs and over the crouching ponies. A sea of happy wagging tails was Verity's answer as the digging increased. The other contingent of Shadow Bolts, meanwhile, kept heading for Rainbow Dash, so Korra and the Akasas did he do. From the above, they heard the Stalters cry of, Charge! Ever uttered. They looked up to see a soft yellow Pegasus with a pink mane flowering over them. Um, please. She so added, have a beat layer, the Shadow Bolts found themselves also being attacked from above. Slipping down with a fierce cry, talons outstretched, a swarm of gargoyles tackled the Shadow Bolts out of the sky! <laughs> to add to the confusion, a sudden swirl of water flooded a pair of wrecked fountains that occupied the corners of the throne room. Out of the fountain bows sprouted a guild pony shaped heads of sea ponies, spraying water out of their mouths and knocking shadow bolts out of the air with concentrated water jets. Rainbow Dash turned her head to Sakura and winked. Tells you ahead, a cutting plan! Now, tell us how to use the elements so we can blast her! Sakura opened her mouth but was cut off by a blast from Nightmare Moon that stuck between the two of them, forcing them to split up. The rainbow went sprawling, rolling over until she came and stopped against the wall. She looked up to see Nightmare Moon looming over her. YO! Yeah! The pink just looked up weakly. Um, hi? <gasps> Dad's rolled away just before Nightmare Moon's hooves smashed where her head had been a second earlier. Scrambling to her hooves, Rainbow ran to where her friends were gathered at the entrance. As tense as things were, she was smiling. They had an army. They had the elements of harmony. And they had each other. She just knew the second she was with her friends, everything would be alright. She was about halfway across the room when she heard some pony said her name. She turned. It was Sakura. The seamer pointed at a place across the room. The Nightmare Moon's horn was crackling as she aimed it at the doorway where her friends were standing. With all the chaos in the room, the others hadn't even noticed her. No! Dash charged ahead, unfurling her wings. She streaked ahead. Her mane swept back. Twice saw her approaching, waving her over with a hoof. Get down! Several things happened at once. Nightmare Moon fired. 
Rainbow swept out her wings and succeeded in knocking all five of her friends away. She barely had time to sigh before the lightning struck her in the side. She screamed at the burning, charring sensation, even as she felt herself being propelled through the wall, fuck showering on her impact. Rainbow's vision swam as she was knocked out of the throne room, and out of the castle altogether. Below her, she saw the Everfree Forest growing closer as she fell into spin. She faintly heard some pony, maybe several some ponies shout her name. Then she closed her eyes, and everything went black. Chapter 26, The Return Rainbow Dias! All five mares yelled at once, seeing the command Bluebird smashed to and through the wall. Dust and debris was scared everywhere. Twilight barely remembered to use her magic to keep the sprayed bits of rocks from hitting her and every pony else in the face, or, so let forbid, the eyes. There was an agonizing twenty or thirty seconds where all she could do was swirling clouds and dust in a gray streak. One seemed about her head, reciting a poem she had learned to go. It served as prophecy and eulogy. Demons run when a good man goes to war. Night will fall and drown the sun when a good man goes to war. Friendship dies, the true love lies. Night will fall and dark will rise when a good man goes to war. Demons run but count the cost. The battle's won, but the man is lost. <sighs> Sakura sighed gravely as she looked down the hole Das made when she was hurled through it. Her eyes widened when she promptly fled from the room before the smoke and dust cleared. Nightmare Moon flapped her wings once and cleared the room. The battle royale between the shadow bolts on one side and the gargoyles, demon do diamond dogs, and sea ponies somehow seemed to re regulate to the background. The evil princess stepped over the probe form of one of her shadow bolts and inclined her head to the side to avoid a gargoyle plummeting through the air. Instead, she walked over to loom over the five distraught friends of Rainbow Dash. Pinkie Pie's lip trembled and her eyes went wide. When Dash didn't return, her hair seemed to deflate. Tears of strange seemed to burst from the eyes. Rarity bawled into a scented lace hanky, so overwatched she didn't seem to notice her makeup was running. Elmasad had her hot tongue glow over her face, as she held Twilight tight. Elmasad having her hat tugged over her face is always badass. The unicorn sobbing and shaking. Fireside was silent. Her face was hidden from behind her long pink mane. Seriously, I do that a lot with Applejack. Nightmare Moon smiled. Whatever is the matter? She asked coldly, startling them into nosing her. Except for Fluttershy. She was unmoved. Ah, oh, yes. Could you be missing your newfound friend? A shame. The Dark Princess walked around her, her voice sounding like she was half musing to herself, half carrying a civil conversation. But really, she brought it upon herself. Now, if you're through with the folly of chancing me, perhaps we can solve this amicably. You! That one simple word, softly spoken, cut through nightmare disassembling like a hot knife through butter. Every pony turned to see its source. It was Fluttershy. What was that? Nightmare Moon asked, smugly. I didn't quite cause that. You'll have to speak up. Oh, that's right. You can't. You're Fluttershy. Meek, cowardly, defenseless Fluttershy. The pony who always hid under Rainbow Dasa's wings like a fledgling. But she's not here anymore, is she? So tell me, what do you have to say for yourself? She tilted her head, curious. Fluttershy raised her head, her mane falling to the side and revealing her face. Her soft tail eyes were hard and cold as ice. You... She said again, her great teeth grinding together. You big jerk! Her voice raised itself to a loud roar that shocked every pony. Now you've made me angry! She pawed the ground with her huff. Very, very, very angry! First I snarled that last word, she hurled herself at Nightmare Moon, hoof out threats. But there was a resounding crack as her hoof connected with Nightmare Moon's jaw, sending the dark alicorn hurtling backwards. Stumbling, she fell her head over a hose on her pile of rubble and collapsed. Pissed against one of the remaining stone pillars. <laughs> Bravo! Bravo! Can we see that scene again in slow motion? Fireside snarled the last word as she hurled herself at Nightmare Moon. Hoof out threats. 
there was a resounding crack as her hoof connected with Nightmare Moon's jaw, sending the Dark Alicorn hurtling backwards. Suddenly, she fell head over hooves over a pile of rubble and collapsed, pissed against one of the remaining stone pillars. Applejack's mouth opened and shut a few times before she was capable of producing sound. Wow. As meek as it was, the sound of Applejack's voice snapped by Shia out of her rage. She shivered from the adrenaline thrusting through her, and the horror of what she did. Oh, oh my! I'm so sorry! I didn't mean to get st uh, stay upset! Fireside felt her herself apologizing. Trust me, Sir Cube! We don't mind! Feel free to stay upset! AJ hurts. Stay upset! Stay upset! Ow, oh, nuts! See when this nightmare moon climbed back to her hooves, her arm on Dusty and looking incredibly incensed. You dare lay a hoof on your queen! She bellowed. Shaking the very room of her might. Her eyes lit up with dark power as she spread her wings. You shall not escape my wrath! Her attention briefly flickered to the shadow bolts. Be gone! At her command, the shadow bolts pushed, pulled, or lured the allies of the ponies away. The gargoyles flew out to the shadow bolts, continuing their aerial dogfight outside the confines of the castle. The diamond dogs ran down the steps and out of the open to join them, while sea ponies settled back down and swam through the fountain pipes back to the river outside. The five mares alone with Nightmare Moon. There's no one left to save you now, she confirmed, lowering her horns to the charts. Twilight looked around. Applejack and Fluttershy stood to her left, Verity and Pinkie Pie to her right. Shining armor still out cold in the corner, and the two royal guard Pegasi, who turned his original shell bolts, crumbled by the wall. Her eyes narrowed. Could it be there was still hope? You're wrong, Nightmare Moon, she proclaimed, surprising herself. We have each other. You're the one who's all alone. And that's why you will, we will defeat you! Yeah! Pinkie Pie hopped up. So you gotta ask yourself. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Oh wait, wrong question. Y you're supposed to ask that, aren't you? Well, he's got four loops have blues anyway, so... Pikey! AJ muttered, not now. First I took a deep, nervous breath, but her voice was even. I ain't desperate and give up. If we won't either! Indeed! Rarity nodded. Twice horn flashed. Ready, girls? Ready! She nodded. Okay. She thought to herself, What would a brave pony like Rainbow Dash do? Her eyes narrowed as the answer came to her. She pawed the ground, lowering her head. You're kidding. You're kidding, right? Nightmare Moon questioned. Charge! Rainbow Dash was falling through the clouds. They were white. Fluffing and fighting. She drove right into one and snuggled in a deep. Ah. Beep beep. I'm a cloud. This is the best napping place ever. She could just sleep here forever. Dance calls up to the cloud. Soft and fighting and warm. Wait, is this one where clouds warm? Or that's a gray? And had two great soft golden eyes. Okay, this is getting officially weird. Big Bodess! Wake up! The clouds seemed to shake and dissolve as everything was suddenly rearranged. Everything was dark, with temporarily panicked rainbow, until she realized her eyes were closed. All three of them seemed to strain more muscles than fifteen barrel rolls in a loop-de-loop. -loop. Slowly, they opened, revealing a grayish smudge that eventually reconstituted itself into a familiar face, breaking against the dark sky above. They were hovering in midair, apparently she caught before she hit the ground. That was a plus. Hey! Dessie! Des croaked, her voice hoarse. Sup? <clears throat> her exclamation was caused by Dizzy Dew wrapping her forelegs around Rainbow's bill and squeezing the air out of her. Rainbow Dance! The distraught mare hiccuped, wiping tears from her face with her wing. Uh, are you a king? The bruised Pegasus squirmed, suddenly feeling each and every bruise on her. Dizzy, you're squashing me! Oh, sorry! Dizzy apologized weakly, gently lowering her to the ground. That better? She asked as she leaned Rainbow Dash up against a pile of bricks. Rainbow grunted, getting comfortable as she flexed and tested to see what was injured and what wasn't. They'll do. They'll do. Satisfied, Dizzy sat down on a small pile next to hers. She had no other than that, there was awful crack, and the pile fell apart, causing Dizzy to land hard on her backside. Whoops! Dizzy said seamlessly, My bad! That made Rainbow Dash chuckle, despite the pain it caused. How could some pony who literally had bubbles on her flank and eat muffins all day still manage to have buns of steel? 
Shake your head, Dash tried to focus. Okay. Oh, ow. She winced as she strained her head to examine herself. There was a singed pants on her side that had been struck by lightning. Her back gagged where she slammed it into and through the wall. Flapping her wings didn't seem to hurt. Or at least the wings themselves were okay. Okay, so things could be worse. They could be a lot better, but they could be worse. She looked at Dizzy. Thanks. I owe you one. Dizzy gave a weak smile. You saved me from Nightmare Moon. She got up and nuzzled Dash. I'm the one that owes you. Perhaps the matter of depths and repayment could be settled at a later date. Otherwise, the world will never be saved at this rate. The two pigs I turned to see Sakura limping towards them. Sakura, where did you get here? Raven Dash asked. The Seaver shrugged mysteriously and pressed the question aside. That is not what I came here to do. Your friends stand against Nightmare Moon, and they need you. What? Raven shut to her host, probably regretting it by not so to remind her from her injured back and side. <clears throat> Why aren't you there helping them? Sakura's so mouth bent to a straight line. I have done all I can, and besides, besides, but it is you, not I, who can turn the tides. Your presence is what needed to use the elements of harmony to their fullest. Otherwise, there are so many bits of rock, utterly useless. Be nice if you told me what I was supposed to do with them. Raybon crumbled as she fights her wings experimentally. When he tugged on the muscles on her back, she felt sharp twins of pain. Seeing her expression, Sakura hurried to her side. From her saddlebags, she pulled out a bottle and started applying it to her back and sin's side. Rainbow Dash hissed before the cool mixer started to soothe her injuries. Just what are the elements of harmony anyway? After placing her bottle back in her bag, Sakura looked at her. It is not a matter of an explanation, but a revelation. You must understand harmony truly means. Otherwise, a victory will be merely the stuff of dreams. Great! Rainbow grasped. Even as he stretched her wing and pain free body. I gotta get back then. She looked around. You guys, don't follow me. I want you to try and sneak in, get shiny armor, steel wing, and silver lining out. Think you can do that? Dizzy saluted. You betcha! Sakura nodded. Good! Death swept her wings. Tend to show nightmare moron that it takes more than a little lightning to stop Rainbow Dash! Rainbow, wait! Yeah, Dizzy, what's up? Rainbow was surprised to find herself wrapped up in a hug from Titsy. She didn't say a word or listen her grip, but the Rainbow Dash took the hint and hugged her back. Titsy was more than a camp counselor. She was like, well, everything Rainbow Dash ever needed growing up. A big sister, best friend, and stepmom all rolled into one. Titsy was the pony who always tried to encourage Dash to keep her out of trouble. At the same time, was the one Dash always tried to defend against ponies who thought Titsy was dumb or slow. Rainbow Dash... Dizzy said softly, Can you promise me one thing? She nodded, Of course, Dizzy, name it. Can you? I mean, will you take care of Dizzy? She asked quickly. Dash pulled back so she could look at Dizzy in the eyes. Dizzy, is this really the. Then it hit what Dizzy was asking. She was making preparations in case she didn't come back. Oh, she swallowed. Of course, I'd be honored. Dizzy smiled. I bet Dizzy will be happy when we get back. I tell her I plan to spend a lot more time with you two. She stressed, leaving no question that both of them would be going home. Then she turned to Sakura. Watch your stripey rug too, Z. This I shall endeavor to do, if my love means so much to you. Quit Sakura with a smile. All right then, let's go. Nightmare Moon laughed as she slid aside yet another magical blast from Twilight Sparkle. Ha 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 ha! Come now, is that all? The lavender unicorn panted and exhausted. Things had been going so well. The worst part was that Nightmare Moon was content with merely toying with them, not seeing them as a real threat. From what Twilight could see, she might not have been far wrong. Despite their best efforts, they couldn't see the land of blow or Nightmare Moon. She didn't even dodge, refusing to give them the satisfaction of knowing they might have been able to hurt her. Flashes of lightning and arcane magic she hurled against them time and time again, with the five heroic but power overpowered mayors were being tossed aside again and again. Only Twilight had any luck in weathering the storm of fierce magic, retaliating with some of her own. But her power was no match for Nightmare Moons. Dark Mare chuckled as Twilight fought for breath. Come now! Why do you persist? You can't really have any expectation of winning a ghost me, can you? There was no answer for Twilight besides an indignant snort. Ah, <laughs> oh, how do you do that? 
I see Nightman Rainbow Dust has been rubbing off of you. She grinned cruelly, twisting the knife. Ah, I know. You think that the favorite elements of harmony will save the day for you. Nightmare laughed as she used her magic to levitate the six stone spears in the air. Allow me to spare you the disappointment by taking care of that now! With swift motion of her head, she hurled it to the ground, smashing it to pieces. No! Twilight's face paled as bits of the elements rained down. The sound of Nightmare Moon laughing drowned out as if coming from far away. She didn't even notice Nightmare's horn glowing again as she pulled Twilight away. Twilight found herself magically bound and hovering in front of the dark mare, her friends surrounding her in a similar state. No matter how much they struggled or fought, they couldn't move or break free. Nightmare Moon smiled at them. Stun witness, my little ponies. Your strategies have failed, your weapons are useless, and, oh yes, the end of harmony has come! <laughs> the moon shall never again wane, hiding in the sky, providing light and sustenance to those who obey me. I shall burst the ghost night of the day, and all will rise up me. I am ruler of the night! I am your princess. I am the ruler of long-winded introductions! Raymond dashed into her head as he flew in, stopping before the dark ruler, stunning every pony present with a blatant disregard for the laws of probability, with six days you should be dead by this point. Do you ever stop talking about yourself? Dash continued. The night shall last forever, all shall love me in despair, it tear the rain, unlimited rice pudding, yada yada yada! We got it! Taste the record! Rainbow Dash! Twilight on the other side, overjoyed to see her. Rainbow Moon, Nightmare Moon was not pleased, especially being cut off mid rant You're supposed to be dead! The Dark Ruler request for snarled. Rainbow shrugged casually. Sorry, sounded boring. Had plans. Feel free to try it yourself if you like. See tense. Waiting for the inevitable explosion for the ruler of nightmares. But instead, Nightmare Moon exhaled. It seems I have underestimated you. Yeah, I bet you'll have- Wait, what? Dash was not expecting this. Nightmare Moon inclined her head. Her posture one at ease, and her tone of- Regressing respect? What the hey? Walking down from her dais, Nightmare Moon approached Rainbow Dash, spreading her wings. We need to talk. Her mane and tail spread out. Surrounding and engulfing the two of them, cutting them off from sight and sound of the outside world. Chapter 27 The Offer Rainbow Dash whirled around in every direction, but she was the same blue's mist that completely hid everything. She couldn't see her friends, the throne room, or hear a thing beyond it. Might as well have been an impenetrable wall. I wanted to have a moment to talk, just the two of us, Nightmare Moon explained calmly, as if this was a normal occurrence. Free from any distractions. Rainbow Dash flapped her wings, rearing up her hind legs and boxing the air in front of her forelegs. All I have to say could be said with these babies! She threw a quick right, left, right jab. So be it, Nightmare Moon said calmly. But before you do, tell me, why are we fighting? A nonplussed expression crossed Rainbow Dash's face, as if to say, We're, You're kidding, right? Celestia is dead. Should I somehow be Fyquist, what would become of Equestria? Be rid of a princess, and any pony capable of moving the sun or moon, how would Equestria survive? Yeah, Alcorn asked evenly. I- Rainbow Dance's mind came to a screaming halt as he processed this. She had been so focused, so determined on saving her friends, stopping Nightmare Moon, that she never stopped to think about what would happen afterwards. Nightmare Moon saw this and pressed on. Celestia isn't coming back. There isn't anything you or I can do about that, regardless of what the outcome is. Despite what she may have told you, I never wanted her dead. I wanted her to see that she was wrong. She made her own choice and the rest of us have to live with it. Typical Celestia. You shut up about Celestia! Rainbow barked, tensing for a fight. But Nightmare Moon refused to be bayed. I know you cared for Celestia. But let us look at this rationally. She is using you to fight her battles for you. You, barely out of your fiddlyhood, were left to face the greatest power Equestria had ever known. Why didn't she do it to herself? She narrowed her eyes at her rainbow, opened her mouth to explain, quickly cut her off. I'm sure she gave you some neat and pot explanation. But the truth is, she is a coward, always using others like chess pieces. 
You! No! She, she! Raven Dash wishes she was more eloquent. She was new Nightmare Moon was wrong, but she couldn't come up with the words to prove it. The Dark Alcorn shifted the conversation to another ground while Rainbow Dash was struggling. The old world can never be brought back. It is dead as Celestia herself saw it as death warrant. Instead of futility defying me, why not help me create a new world? A better one? Are, are you crazy? Why would I ever help you? Rainbow demanded. Why would you even think that? We touched minds, Rainbow Dash. Nightmare Moon reminded her. I saw how the luck we really are. No pony can understand you like I can. Yeah, right. Dash turned around, flicking her tail dismissively. Nightmare called after her. You mean that I can never understand that deep drive and thirst for recognition and respect for your accomplishments that propels you forward? The stabbing pain when, in spite of all your efforts, that your hard work goes unnoticed and unappreciated, suffering the stings and bars of disdain from others who are just so small that they resent any pony who isn't as puny as them! Rainbow paused, turning around slowly. She tried to swallow the lump of emotions that threatened to choke her. Nightmare Moon nodded. Oh yes, I understand. Better than you think. But I can help you achieve your dreams with Celestia refused to. A mere a word would be enough to get you to, uh, to listen to the Wonderbirds, your lifelong dream. You would be remembered easily, cotton within a few years on your own merit. If I said the word, you would be the cotton now. Rainbow Dance's wings twitched. To have her dream offer up on a platter before her, who wouldn't be tempted. I... I... Flying through the sky, so nothing but the wind in your face and the sky at your back. Nightmare Moon spun f her fancy, materializing in front of Rainbow. All your trappers left miles behind you. The doubters and naysayers left in your wake. Everything you sacrificed, all those ponies who doubted you, it'll all be a thing of the past. Her voice was alluring, tempting. After all the hard work you've done, are you any closer to joining them now than you were years ago? And why is that? Because instead of helping you, as Celestia promised you would, she's been intent on grooming you to be something you're not. A boring, proper mare, learning things no pony cares about, with the goal in mind of making you the perfect weapon, a pony to lead others against me. But we both know that you and I have a lot more in common than you do with the stayed, a tight shadow ponies account a lot, don't you? Des felt her knees starting to shake. With what she didn't quite know. Not a net, the princess of the night asked. Never fear, I will not forget those you care about. You see, Celestia is not the only one who could be mercifully kind. Your friends will have everything they ever wanted. She gestured broadly with her wings as images started to swirl in the mist surrounding them. Rainbow Dash saw Appletech beaming proudly as hundreds of new apple trees were planted in Sweet Apple Acres. Dozens of hired ponies working the fields while she and her extended family looked on with pride. Next was Rarity, flanked by some of the most important ponies in Canterlot. Fancy Pants, Photo Fitness, Sapphire Stores, Hoity Toy, all gushing over her new fashion line as model after model walked down the runway in Rarity's dresses. The white unicorn squealed in happiness, the others eating out of her hoof. Then came Pinkie Pie. Planning parties and decorating all of Canterlot as the entire city was transformed into one great big, laughing, dancing celebration that every pony joined in. Tony Sparkle's eyes glittered as he twirled around from her place inside the heart of the Royal Library and archives of Canterlot, surrounded by all the knowledge in the world. Fireside flared her wings happily, squeaking softly as she was surrounded by animals great and small in Canterlot Gardens, wearing a white coat with her name, denoting her status as royal veterinarian and caregiver. It did she do. Rainbow bit her lip as she saw her old friend, who struggled with two so uh, jobs to support her foal all by herself, hugging her daughter and crying happily as he moved into a large, spacious, well-furnished house. Unless we forget, the acorn said in a hushed tone. Nightmare Moon's ethereal maid circled around Rainbow Dash, scaring a peripheral vision. All she could see was shining armor, standing before her and looking at her adoringly. I know Celestia would never understand. Nightmare Moon whispered literally. She was eternal, beyond the common needs of mortal ponies. I am beyond them as well, but I can understand them where Celestia did not, could not. She paused, pressing her muscle right next to Rainbow Dash's ear. We've lived too long, seen too much. 
to live long as we have is to leave behind joy and compassion and companionship because we know it to be transitory of the moment. We know it will return to us. Only those whose lives are brief can believe that love is eternal. With her wings, she gently nods the rainbow dash to shining armor. You should embrace that remarkable illusion. It may be the greatest gift your kind has ever received. And I have offered to you freely. Hold it! Stop the pick! It just got awesome! Bevel of Five reference! I salute you, Terrinary, for referencing one my for referencing my favorite sci-fi show. And the runner up in the fit top fifty sci-fi shows ever. No, seriously, there was a poll. Babylon five, second place. Right beneath Doctor Who. Don't know how I feel about that. Shining. The girls Rainbow Resal Hoof. Only to have the illusion before her dispelled and dissipate back into the mist. Nightmare Moon walked in front of her. So, Rainbow Dash, the choice is yours. Will you fight a pointless doomed battle, but even if should you win, you still lose? Or will you help me make yours and every pony's dreams come true? Looking down, Rainbow Dash tried to marshal her thoughts. Did she have the right to make this decision? What did she do to affect every pony she knew? Why did she have to make this choice for them? All her dreams and dares, wrapped up into one bundle. Why should she refuse? Nightmare Moon was right. Celestia was gone and by her own violence to boot. What would happen if Nightmare Moon was vanquished? Would Celestia return? Would the sun and moon move on their own? Would they be stuck where they are now? She couldn't know the answers to those questions. So she settled at once she had a chance of answering. Why keep fighting a battle for a pony who wasn't around anymore? Who might have indeed, as Nightmare Moon alleged, abandoned her? Because Celestia loved you. The answer was so simple, yet so profound. Celestia loved me, she repeated softly. Nightmare Moon frowned. What nonsense is this? It's what makes her different from you! Death shot back, looking her squarely in the eyes. You just want to rule so you can have things your way, so you can make every pony like you! Celestia loved every single one of her subjects. She would never take a mother away from her filly and turn her to a slave. She would never make shiny armor like that that way if he didn't really feel it himself, just to win me over. It doesn't matter if Celestia never gave me my dreams on a silver platter, or if she isn't here anymore. Celestia was always there for us, and now it's my turn to be there for her and what she cared about. I'll never abandon what Celestia taught me. That'd be like abandoning Celestia herself. And that's something I'm never going to do! The Nightmare snarled, burying her teeth angrily, as her eyes filled with malice. Her facade of kindness fell away like a snake shedding an old skin. Be careful in your decision. I'm offering you a chance to accomplish anything and everything. And I'm offering you a chance to kiss my butt! Dash shot back, snoring. So be it! Nightmare wrapped her mane around Rainbow's throat and hold her up to eye level. For a time, I considered sparing your wretched little companions. But now, you shall bear witness to the destruction! Go to the Tyrus! Dash croaked out as he struggled. Nightmare Moon chuckled wickedly. Just where do you think I come from? She hissed in her ear. I hope you appreciate, Rainbow Dash. Everything that happens from this point on is in, on your head. The skies will rain fire, the oceans will rise, the streets will run red with the blood of your friends! Only then, after your last pitiful hope is extinguished, will I end your life! Nightmare Moon's eyes flashed. And let's go!